So welcome back, Nana here, and then we are into the next day's program of this efficient inventory implementation. And then uh, what I teach in this training is all only basics. It doesn't cover very advanced levels. So some extent, whatever this is covering, but not to the complete extent. You only have to uh, dig and then explore the application and then find out new, new things. My students have gone to Dizzy Heads because once when you know the basics, you can now do a lot of exploration with it. So now let us now go ahead and then uh, see this is now fine. We are now going to go for the next topic. So let me have a screen now. So if you go and then have a look at it here, I made a mess of it now fine. It is not exactly ordered now fine. I have not seen it actually. Fine. It is not exactly ordered. So now we are done completed uh, the sub inventory level sourcing. You know, completed the sub inventory level sourcing. Now we are going for what? The supplier level sourcing. Fine. One not two is now completed now. And you know, probably one or two, and then uh, uh, the org level sourcing will now uh, take it later. Actually, now we are going to go for supply level sourcing. The next topic is supply level sourcing. <clears throat> so we are going to do it now. So let us go there and then uh, create an item and then start our demo on this one. We go to the product management and then go to the product information management. And remember, only for the training we are now creating this many items. In reality, you will now create only whatever is required and then whatever is given by the customers. Right? So try to tune yourself to the. Uh, in client's location now, <clears throat> and accordingly you do it. Fine. This is only for uh, uh, what happens uh, learning purposes, and then this path is not correct for a real implementation. Actually. Go there. So click on OK now. <clears throat> I will now create an item for supply level sourcing. M20 underscore uh, <clears throat> min max supply level. So I will now say it's a supplier level sourcing. Supplier level sourcing. I'm working on it. And then here, uh, for supplier level sourcing, the only prerequisite on the uh, one, one extra prerequisite on the uh, on score specification is what it must have a list price. Otherwise, it will not get struck actually. So if there is one list price, it will not be interfaced to purchasing at all. If the list price is missing, it will not be interfaced to purchasing. And there's a basic requirement. Otherwise, you must have a BPA in purchasing. If list price is absent, and then if you have a BPA, then also it will work fine. If you have a blanket purchase agreement, it will also work. So one of them is a mandatory for pushing it into the supplier area. Now. You go to the associations, and then here, go to the actions, and then go to select and add. Let me add my organization. This is M201 is the one entry now. Select and then click on apply, and then click on demo. And then while you're doing it, you can do it at the at the org level, Org level sourcing can be done at two places now. Fine. Right? Well, specification, if you go to the inventory, go to the planning now. So you can even give the specifications over here. The minimum, the maximum, the minimum order quantity, the maximum order quantity, and the fixed quantity. Right? And then make the replenishment type as what? Supplier actually. So at the item level also we can give it. So if you give all these parameters at the item level, you have to run the org level planning. Right? Otherwise, you have to run the sub inventory level planning. So we are now still concentrating only on the sub inventory planning. Org level planning is a lab exercise for you. So org level planning will work only for two things, one for supplier and then one for org. It will not work for the sub inventory level. If the replenishment type is going to be sub inventory level, org level planning will not work at all. On the min max, there are only two tips. One is what? Sub inventory level or org level. And then the replenishment types are three now. Fine. So supplier, sub inventory and organization. So you should not get confused with the three replenishment types and then two types of min max running. The min max can be run either at org level or at sub inventory level. And when you're running at org level, it will now pick up the values from the item parameters actually. And then here, sub inventory is ruled out. Fine. That is not a possible. Fine. Only org and supply, they have given it, but that is not correct actually. <clears throat> they, should, they should have, what happens, avoided this now, fine. They should have removed from the list of values, but they have done it. There's a bug maybe. But uh, they copied not from uh, EBS, I think. Ah, uh, EBS also the same thing, exactly. <laughs> EBS also the same bug is there. And so, what happens, they have copied it from EBS actually. In fact, the developers were seeing when I was discussing one of the, one of the developers who has developed the supply report lecture. He was given an instruction to what happens exactly replicate what is there in EBS now, fine. whether it's a bug or not. Fine, he exactly replicated it. That guy, he was a Dumbian actually. And then I was discussing with him about one of the bug in the supplier form now. He said, No, no, I know that, Nana, but what happens? I was asked to develop only like this, so I did it. <laughs> so when I was under, undergoing the training in the headquarters, the advantage is what? Even the developers were uh, frequently visiting uh, the training sessions now. And they will now come for 10-15 minutes and then they will have a chit chat with everybody. And then it was not really a training actually. I mean, it was only a train the trainer session and so what happens? Only the highlights have been discussed upon the training. Not a full-fledged training actually. 
and it's a very excellent opportunity to meet the developers when i was in redwood shows california wonder <laughs> wondering the students so it's not done my brother so in that associations we go there and then i have associated to two ox my god okay so m20 min max uh, supplier level is going i have no make it as a beginning itself supplier no? cpp underscore supplier min max so that whatever i can easily query it now when i was saying easy querying i was remembering my student having created an inventory org like a01 underscore inv1 in the, in the client's location <laughs> and he was asking me the user he is not accepting the naming sir what is this <laughs> oh god so really was uh, laughing at him <laughs> so m20 underscore sub underscore min max so that whatever i will be able to get things very fast now right? uh, go that is not so i'll go and give a c1 close now fine my item is ready with the list price that is the basic requirement i am not given any anything the item attributes actually fine with that you want it so let us now go there and then uh, we will now open up the sub unit fine with that you consider my mail down check on it i'm sorry it's marriage sub block manage sub unit okay i'll go there and now the organization okay now fine it is a pm201 at the moment okay now <coughs> And then here in uh, the same sub one itself because it's not having any locator control and so I'm now using the sub unit. If I go to the manage items sub unit, manage items sub unit is the highest restriction in Oracle. Now fine, go that click on it. And then I go to restrict the item to the sub unit. Click on it. So manage sub one, empty sub one. Oh God, I have done another, another sub unit or what? Uh, it's not visible here. Now fine. Where exactly did I, I forgot? Use the, the main S F S. Oh, main, main, main and S F S. Okay, fine, but. so i now go and then this one fine i was using main and sfsi for the sub inventory level uh, uh, replenishments now we are going for a supplier replenishments i will now go there and then restrict it over you know fine click on it so now there is a notice you will click on plus now fine go there click on it and the item is what m20 <coughs> underscore su and then give it up it come out of my head so m20 sorry i made a mistake now is it m20 underscore su give it up so now going fine go there Uh, and then uh, one of the guy has uh, forgotten to what happens uh, put as a min max plan is not giving him point uh, struggling or anything so what the video that take notes of each level so the inventory planning method is what min max and go there 10 50 and then 5 then 5 and then 40 so this will not give you two outputs now fine one for 40 and then one for 10 because since on and is not there we need to replenish it to a level of 50 and so what happens it will be giving two outputs now fine brother so this uh, the minimum order quantity and maximum order quantity in this case is now given by the supplier because i am not going to go over the source is what supplier now. so no go on and make the source the supplier now. so these two things are given by the supplier actually fine using that is a restriction on the trolley on the lorry or the carrier which he is now sending it now fine i cannot uh, order must the supplier anything be below this now fine. otherwise my carry cost will be more than the order cost and so these parameters are now given by the <clears throat> so the par is still not working i don't know how to do it fine i will not give it as a lab access if somebody finds it out he tell me because we need rest or postman services afterwards i never touched it at all fine last year may i uh, started auditing it and then the document says you need to have rest or postman services even my technical guys who are there in the training in that in that uh, in that batch they were also unable to do it fine. if anybody does it whatever they will be demonstrating the par it has got three things now one is a par level replenishment one is a rc level replenishment one is a kanban level so rc par and kanban are coupled together in fusion now and excellently done but unfortunately i don't know how to do that so make the supply supply type as a supply function on seven post from the most so you know that we go there we are now set it and then we will now go there and then run the min max now let me point we will now run the min max directly so <coughs> should you process <coughs> So click on this thing, and then I will now say print min max. Print min, and then we will tap now. Print min max planning report. Organization is M two zero one. Sort by what happens in the item, and that's it. I will now make a sub unit planning, and then I will put the sub unit here. Sub one, I am going to put it now. Is the place where I have uh, restricted it. I am going to the remaining the restock is going to know now. So to begin with, what happens? We now have a no the restock is going to know. We will now see whether any output is coming out. So click on submit now. Restock is going to know. So we will now check whether the output is coming or not. Okay, submit again now. So refresh it. So print min max moon planning report is now running. So we will now have a look at it.
So click on republish now. You can republish. So now you go there, click on export a PDF now. Okay. Now have a look at it. So have a look at it. Open it up. <coughs> now it is now giving an output of 50. So you can now see the parameters now. Fine. If anybody has, this is an excellent tool. The, this output is an excellent tool. And then if your reorder quantity is not exactly coming, you can now check whether your minimum is there, maximum is there. And then on and how much is there or the supply now fine here you can see the supply and then the demand so on and plus supply minus demand is available quantity so you can even make a calculation if something is not exactly working as per as this report will now give you a clear indication about why something is not considered for the supply and demand actually afterwards you can apply so if a supply is not exactly coming then you can analyze why the supply is not coming so that is what it is fine with the minimum is 5 and then the maximum is 40 and then the multiple is 5 and then so what am I there? It does not give an output of 50. So it will now recommend two requisition lines, one for 40 and then one for 10 now. Any doubts on this now? One for 40 and then one for 10. <clears throat> so it will be asking this now. So the item. <clears throat> so go there. Fine. It's not done. Fine. Good. So you understood it. Now we are going to run the min max with the restock is good. Yes. So once when you give a restock is good. Yes. What happens? It is to, it will be interfacing it to purchasing. Now we'll now see in EBUS how the demand supply works now. We'll now see what how the demand supply works now. Go there. I'll now go to the EBUS documentation. I'll now go to the OEM now. And I'll now go to the D three or something like that. Find the D two. Uh, we have one document called demand supply now. Demand supply is yes. So in e-business documentation in OEM on OEM day two, we have a document called demand supply. So open it up on OEM day two. So there. Now you know see about how the demand supply balancing logic is working now. So there are many, many modules which will be having a demand. They need material actually, fine, like order management and then some other modules. Fine. And they will now throw into a common area called a planning area actually in e -business. So the, if the demand is not fulfilled, the unfulfilled demands will be thrown into the planning modules like MRP, ASCP, and then it will be a common area actually. And then the item in the source module will become, become supply eligible actually. The item in the source module will now become supply eligible. It becomes a supply, supply eligible. So the planning modules will now take care of it. Let us say we are not sold any MRP or any ASCP or demand planning or demantra or capacity planning or shop flow shedding, nothing you are sold. Now. So then also it will now go into the general planning area. If none of the modules are sold, what happens will be going on? It will be going over there. And then the line becomes supply eligible. And depending upon certain considerations, what happens, let us say, if it is going to be an ATV item, the item is an ATV item, and then when you progress the sales order on this now, it automatically throws the supply eligible line into manufacturing actually. It will be loading it if the item is an ATV item. If it is going to be an ATV model, what happens, we will now configure the item and then we will now create a star item now. The star item is also eligible for manufacturing. So depending upon certain conditionalities, what happens, it will be thrown into the place now. It will now create, what happens, auto-create final assembly orders in, in EBS now. So this will now create a job order. Job gets mass loaded into it. And then here, what happens, it will now, uh, while you're running it, it will now create a supply order on VIP actually. It will be creating a supply order on VIP. And then once when the supply order is created, you will now, you'll now find the job gets mass loaded into VIP and then you will now release the job and then complete the production. So once when the production is completed, the job is completed in the finished goods and then the stores and the update in the planning model back. So the planning model will be communicating the fulfillment to the source system. So the demand flows in and then the fulfillment takes place by communicating it back to the source system. <clears throat> so here also the same logic is now met. So the demand will be flowing in into the space and then the fulfillment will be communicated. But here it is not a planning model. It is called supply orchestration or in short, it is, it is, or other is it long, fully known as what? Supply chain orchestration. In Fusion, they have brought, they have replaced this area with a thing called supply chain, supply chain planning orchestration actually. It is in short known as a supply orchestration. So the supply orchestration will be receiving the demand and then upon completion of this, what happens, it will be communicating the fulfillment back to the source system actually. So here in this case, I have not shown you the item is an ATU item actually or a star item in this case. If that is not the case, you have now set up an ADZ now. You have now set up an ADZ like SR, ASR, ASL, BBA. Then what happens? It will be creating a supply order on PO. If an ADC is now created, what happens? A supply order will be created on PO. Mainly based upon the sourcing rule and assigned sourcing rules combination, it will be creating a supply order on purchasing actually. Fine. If that is missing, so SR, SAASR is missing, and then item is an ATO item, then it will be throwing it on what? And the manufacturing actually. Here it is not done. 
So here, data pushed into the interface tables of purchasing, and then later pulled into the base tables as approved PR or PO, and then converted into PO, and then you receive it, and then upon PO receipt, it will be communicating back to the fulfillment system that what happens, the activity for the purchasing is complete. The fulfillment will be communicated back to the source. So in Fusion also, we have the demand flowing into the supply chain orchestration area, and then the fulfillment will be communicated back to the demanding module actually. So you know how I'll go to this. To go there, click on it, and I'll go to the uh, records, and then I go to the e extra docs. Oh my God. In the extra docs, we have one document called uh, the 37th one is a DOO score. This one, DOO score, have a look at it now. Double click on it. The DOO score is there. <clears throat> so, here there are two things are there. One is the DOO, distributed orchestration, it is equivalent to the workflow of EBS actually. EBS will be having an order flow generic and then line flow generic and all. Fine. So here also the same concept is there. They will be fully explained during order management actually. So and do is the one which is a replacement of the workflow of EBS. So the do will now get fired upon submitting the order. Once when you submit the order, the do fires, and then it will now progresses on this do till the line gets closed. So the purpose of do is to what close the line actually. And you'll be seeing it upon how the line is getting closed and then how the order is getting closed. Everything will be seeing. Whereas SCO is not like that. SCO is a different one. It begins on the ESS job process supply chain orchestration. So when such a thing happens here now, when such a thing happens here, whenever the demand is now pushed into this place, what happens? Oh, it will be going into an interface area, interface table area of a supply chain orchestration, and then you are going to pull it into that. What happens? It will not, you will not start the process again. So you will not start the process now. Right? So you will now run this concurrent ESS job once when it Whatever has now reached the interface tables of supply chain process, or the process supply chain or, or orchestration process, process supply chain orchestration is now having a, a, a input table now. So once when it reaches over there, then it will now process and then it will now push into the purchasing actually. This is now responsible for pushing actually into the purchasing. And then the thing gets fulfilled, the demand gets fulfilled once when you what happens once when the inventory is available on the destinations available. So once the inventory is available on the destination sub inventory, then the process of score gets fulfilled actually. And that is the end point. So the start point and the end point. It begins with the process supply chain orchestration. So that what happens, whatever has reached the, the interface area of uh, the supply chain, that will be processed and then it will be further uh, pushing. Off, right? It will be either pushing it into the purchasing or it will be pushing it to the manufacturing or it will now push it to the transfer orders. Right? It will now create three such outputs now. Right? So by make and transfer of the outputs of this process supply chain orchestration, and then depending on the output, what happens, it will now progresses towards item reaching the destinations of inventory. Clear on this, now find any doubts on the scope process, the start point and end point. No, no, when the requisition import is run, or I yeah. mean, I don't remember, remember what infusion the equivalent of that would be. Yeah, here also the, we have the import requisitions, but here import requisitions will not run at all. The process supply chain orchestration will now take care of importing the requisition actually into the purchasing. Right. Okay. The and store system, if the so the feeding system, the demand is now asking for a what happens a fulfillment from a supplier. The process supply chain orchestration will now push it into the base tables of purchasing till it pushes what happens. That is his responsibility. No, no import requisitions will run now. And if there are no um, sourcing rules assigned on the item. Yeah. Yeah, here and the concept of sourcing rule, assign sourcing rule is not done away with. It is there only in planning now. The sourcing rules and assign sourcing rules are used only by the planning module. Purchasing is no more using it at all. Purchasing does not use it. And and what would be the default status of the purchase requisition? It will be incomplete. Like? Actually. It'll be incomplete. So normally, Anna, sir, if you use the sourcing rule, sourcing rule assignment, mm -hmm. what will happen if we create a purchase requisition? Mm -hmm. Automatically, if you populate that particular part number, then automatically it will give the requisition. I mean, the supplier supply side by default. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So maybe. that's maybe a one of the future. Yeah, but normally, thing, no, yes, yeah. Normally they will use the ASP plan if used. Otherwise, there's no point that we are using. So ASP plan will be using the sourcing rule and assigned sourcing rules. Through which what happens? What is saying? The moment you import the requisition into the purchasing area, it will also come with the supplier information also on the requisition. Okay, good, good information. But yeah, yeah. normally. Uh, what what happens is that when an external module is coming, you may not be having a license for planning actually. So in that case, what happens? You cannot use the SR and ASR. So you may have to manually populate, or otherwise there are other ways of automation. Fine. Yeah, Learning about the automation for, ways uh, in purchasing actually. Yeah, even for minmax plan, uh, no, no, sir. If you have a sourcing rule assignment exists, mm -hmm. when you release the plan order, minmax plan from the source type as a supply, mm -hmm. 
mm-hmm. then it will create a requisition with supplier and supplier side. Mm-hmm. So those supplier supply side will pick from the. So even supply. for the pure purchasing, you are saying it will work. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I mean well, the inventory, we'll the min max plan, whatever okay. we are talking now. Okay, we will now experiment that also. Yeah. So we will now. He's saying that even for the min max, what happens? It will work whether you have. But here, what happens? I know working on a instance where it is all licensed for everything now. Fine. So it will not. Not hundred percent. Not hundred percent like a ranking. Nothing will work. Uh-huh. If we'll you set see. the ranking one, so two, we'll three, 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 three,
ஒரு <laughs> 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 on the company yes interesting only the min max support long being the restocks of no no at the submit level i have no problem so we'll no see whether it gives an output or not so otherwise we we'll know so much of a requisition will be created now if you want to i know your output the one the one restocks is no at the submit level planning click on whether we we'll know see we our object is what to check whether min max is giving an output or not that is what our object is and not whether it is getting interface interfacing is next process no so here itself it has to filter out now now this 50 quantities is now considered as a supply or not uh, we are interested in that. so we are now given a restock is no no fine click on it otherwise uh, too much of a data will be there for us to analyze actually later on I click on republish now click on the export to pdf now click on save. instead of clicking that gear icon you can directly click on that yellow file icon you know. once again fine i will not, i will not do it next time now fine you know suggesting some other way now fine but click on it now what happens it says the reorder quantity is zero so that means what whatever has reached the interface tables of a supply chain orchestration is also considered as supply any resubmit in nana sir okay the restock option yes one okay not restock the restocking is a different activity if the output is coming then only it will go into the purchasing area if the output is not there it will never go at all but we have to only run the min max now right now what happens i will not say i will not without interface supply do not consider the interface supply and then see whether it is coming or not right? or you are clear now fine that means what the thing which has now reached the interface tables of supply process process orchestration is also considered as a supply now fine you see the supply quantity is 50 now mm. here supply quantity is 50 and so what happens the available quantity is 50 which is more than the minimum now now let us not consider this supply at all fine we'll not remove ignore it now fine that point will not ignore it now for my case i just resubmit uh, but it got uh, picked up Times. <laughs> maybe I don't know what is the problem now. Maybe some issues. Maybe in the in the instance now. So yeah, we'll not submit a new orchestration. Find out that maybe an issue with the instance actually. Maybe I click on it now. Go there. Organization is what M two zero one. Let me get tab now. I'm going to go there. I'm going to go there. I thought that it may not consider because since you told that it is not considering it, but it is not so. Okay, even the inputs at the supply chain process process orchestration is considered as a supply actually. Go there. I will not say include interface supply. I'm not going to make it as no no. that means what the 50 should not be considered which is there in the interface area i know that i'm not making it include interface supply as no i know that you comment so go there and then i'm not it fine go there and the restock is again no no and i don't want to populate so much of a data on the uh, purchase requisitions actually so i'm not review it and this is not a test and this is a real test actually and this is a real test so we are not making a real test on this of time table supply now it will come no no sir but it's not a real time people will not do this way right Okay. Now the behavior is understood. Now, fine. Now yeah, you yeah. have to modify yeah. the supply and demand as per the requirement. Then you can even run it continuously as a SRS also. Mm. I need to check my environment now. It will. Mm. Now it will be considering it all. Click on read publish. Oh, you are saying one more thing. One second. Now see uh, what is that one? Yeah, somebody was saying that we can uh, no no you click on republish republish uh, instead of clicking the gear icon you can clear click that yellow file okay view report you can sir yeah you know there is no need to save that's what he is saying now fine yeah yes no need to save so if you click on the yellow icon what happens on pdf right so we can even here like, itself you can use it yes you know so saving it whatever you can so good learning fine for that click on it now you can see the supply quantity is zero and then what happens the output is what is 50 actually so this is definitely considered fine it is now considering the supply actually fine that is now uh, if anything has reached the interface tables of supply orchestration that is also a supply actually you got it now fine so that's why it's not working fine good now we already have one data of 50 there is 40 plus none which has now reached the supply chain orchestration area so click on it now we'll now go on the schedule new process and then process of a supply chain orchestration go there click on it so we'll now process supply process supply chain orchestration is now going to pull the data from whatever has come into the interface tables now fine whatever has come as a demand displays it will be dispersing it to either the manufacturing 
or purchasing or transfer orders. Now, this diagram is a very old diagram, and then it shows only two things. One is what either a make or a buy. But in or twelve point two point x, they have even given the transfer also. Fine. This logic is not uh, doing for all the three. Actually. Make buy and transfer. The logic is not working from or twelve point two point x actually. This was done in all twelve point one point x actually. So supply chain orchestration is also going to reroute or rather route this incoming demand to either make or buy or transfer. Actually. In this case, it is a what's called the source system is asking for a supplier, and so what happens? It will be interfacing it to purchasing actually. Click on okay now. It will be interfacing it to purchase. So you go there. Here there are plenty of systems which will be pushing it into the supply chain orchestration area. One is the planning central, sales service procurement, order management, inventory, and then externally, and then what happens? You have got fusion, common work execution, and then the supply chain orchestration itself, and then they are given what the replenishment plan. So this many are coming in. I now choose the inventory now. Fine, inventory, and then previously we had to give the org or this number now. Fine, we had to give the org or this number. One of them is a mandatory now. Fine, go there, click on it, and then I will paste this number also. So seven three four is the one. Now it is not required actually. I will not put only the org now. Even org may not be required. I am not sure about it. And go there, click on it. I am not putting it on the survey again. So click on survey now. It will be processing it now. So the incoming uh, information will be processed of this now. Select it now. Click on it. Go now. So the process supply chain orchestration is now going to process the incoming interface tables, and then it will now push it into the appropriate output branch to either make, buy, or transfer. So click on it. We will now have a look at the output. So it doesn't have any publisher in the output. I'm going to click on this attachment and click on it, and I will now go and then save. So go there. Attachment and save. I will now open up the log, and then and take up with the control E everything, and then close it now. I will now open up a Word file, and then do it now. Open up a Word file. So click on it. <clears throat> you go to the file and then I go to the new now. Go there. I'll now paste it up this place. So if you see this output now, fine. Go on and have a look at it now. Fine. Okay. You can now see it has already processed this min max now. This has already processed. So it has got only one in the interface tables. It has not processed. And then we'll now see the output of it now. So min max five three seven three four six is there. What's called the concurrent number now. It has invoked successfully. This has got processed actually. Now, yeah, in doubts. <clears throat> So close it now. Fine, go there. So I'm not saying. No, I'm saying. On UPS, it will give you a summary of how many requests that got created. Now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. There's a different process altogether. Fine. If you raise a uh, SR, Oracle will honor you. Actually, fine. they honor even uh, some simple request. Actually, fine. they say that I would like to know how many requests have been processed. Fine. If you want to have it, they will not even modify. It. Go there. So click on it. Now we will now go and then have a look at the supply orchestration. Fine, go there. Click on it. So there are five roles for supply orchestration. If you go to the supply chain execution, if you are given all the five or some of them also, what happens? The supply orchestration icon will come. But uh, there is one thing called process uh, supply chain uh, process manager or something like that. This is very important out of five. So if you give it, what happens? The icon will definitely appear on the supply chain execution area. The five roles which are given starting on supply chain. And I have not analyzed it fully. Fine, every role has got a certain role now. Fine, certain uh, things functionality. In all of our projects, what happens? We will now club it into a common role, all the five roles, and then we will now attach it to the user actually. So that what happens? You will be able to do a separate orchestration. If it is going to be across BUs, fine. If your transfers are going to be across BUs, the financial orchestration also has to be set for intercompany payables and receivables. If anybody knows about how to set up the financial orchestration for intercompany payables and receivables, uh, please teach us or give me a document. I will not share it with us now. So that when you perform a transfers for two inventory orgs which are across BU, this will now take care of your payables and receivables transfers actually. <clears throat> so I go to the supply orchestration. I have a document, but I am unable to understand it. There is a financial orchestration document with me, but I couldn't understand it. Somebody has to explain that. So now I am in the SCO area, supply chain orchestration area. I click on the right hand side, and then here, what happens? I go to the manage supply lines now. I click on the manage supply lines, and then here, you go there, and then query your request number. I go there, click on it. Wait, oh sorry, this is not the request number. So I will cancel it. Uh, you are done, and then come out. No, no, reset is there. Reset is there. I will not reset it. So I will not put the min max number. I go there. So I will now go to the monitor process now. Now well, then, click on close now. I'm sorry. I'll now go to the monitor process. Oh, I have not opened it up. I'm going to click on duplicate now. I'm now working on the same area. So, so go to the tools and then I go to the schedule process now. I will now have a look at the monitor process and find uh, this is the one. So 537, uh, 
three four six is the one. And go to the place. There's a min max five three seven, uh, and it is what the three four six now. Five three seven three four six is the one. I'm going to query on. This is a request number now. Supply request number. I take on search. We can even query on others, or we can even add fields in them side and make an R and D on those things. We take on search. It will show you clearly. So it has now created a SKU order now. The supply chain SKU order number is this now. Fine. It is now for two quantities. I can go further now. I go on it. So it is now complete now. Fine. This activity is now complete now. Fine. Go on it. And then I can see it is now done. <coughs> go there. It is now showing you the item. And then the supply level shows in the description now. Fine. Look at the forty internal of the two quantities. The requested date, the reference, requested reference number now, and other things are also shown. Okay. If you click on the hyperlink on the score number now, and click on it, the score number will be having a hyperlink. It now go inside and then show you. Fine. And I don't understand. One is what is now saying closed, and then one point one is complete. Two is not or closed. If you expand it, uh, it is not complete. I don't understand what exactly. Click on it. So here the the score will be giving a recommendation of either buy, make, or transfer. If you go to the transfer, there will not be any recommendation now. If you go to the make also, there will not be any recommendation. And if you click on the buy, you will be having a recommendation. So it has now created a requisition called for us the one zero two five. So the one zero two five the one. So let us now go there and then have a look at this one zero two five. Click on it. Click on it. Click on it. No. Right click on that. Duplicate it now. So you know, go to the area and then have a look at it now. Click on it. Click on it. Go to the procurement and then go to the purchase requisitions now. And click on the purchase requisition. <coughs> so it has now pushed into the purchasing module now and go there so here 1025 is already there it is now coming as an approved one fine there may be a profile option i'm not sure about it fine all the imported requisitions maybe you know how to look at whether any profile is there or not i think there's a profile it will go if you want incomplete status ah, you go there go to set up a minus but uh, subu that profile doesn't work in ebs if it's a dropship uh, <laughs> that's ah. correct Should, it should it should not work yes. i think normally people don't like what incomplete status yeah it's so uh, that will not consider as a supply yes. after that yeah manage purchasing profile is on thing whether click on it no see whether any here any profile is there here very minimal profiles now i mean we don't have any profile for the search don't know it's not in the purchasing side it's an in inventory side maybe okay saying in the inventory it's side. like a, a min max some profile option i forget i study just uh, profile Here profile dependency has been reduced to a great extent actually. Not too much of a profile there. You can search now. Now look at it. So one of the one of the fill kill we have seen now. Fine, I don't understand what exactly it is now. And then one is the reorder approval. So since I am now giving it as a pre-approved, maybe it will be creating it. Had you make it as an incomplete, I think even it will not create an incomplete requisition actually. So there is a reason. So this may be common for all the things now for all the min max maybe. Whether it is going to be a make or a buy or a transfer, what happens? There will be in a pre-approved stage. This. this may be the one. I'm not sure about it. Make R and D, and then make it as no, and then make a check out. Now it has now created a purchase requisition. Here, what happens? We have to go and then process it. One zero two five. I have to process it a purchase order. So before processing it, what happens? There is a setup in purchasing now. Fine, go there. Click on it. There is a setup in purchasing. Fine, now go there. Go to the setup and maintenance. <coughs> in the setup and maintenance area, fine, go there. Go to the actions, and then here go to the offerings. Good offerings. So I will now choose procurement over here now. I will now choose the procurement over here. It is now enabled. If it is licensed, it will be enabled. Otherwise, it will not be. Fine with that. So uh, I will now go to the marketing and then see whether it is enabled or not. Fine. Marketing is also enabled in the same. I will now go to the accounting hub. It's all enabled. Fine. I want to see something which is not the customer data management. I will say it's not enabled. So here, this is not licensed actually. So likewise, it will not show. I will now go to the procurement now. Fine, enable. Click on the opt-in futures now. In the opt-in futures, you go into the purchasing now. Fine, there is one procurement is there, one purchasing is there. So you keep your cursor on the purchasing and then click on the futures now. Fine, click on the futures. So here we have one thing called consolidate online requisitions into few purchase orders. If you enable it. It will not appear on the process area. Process area. I am not going to show you. This, is, this should not be enabled for us now. I am going to click on it. Go there. Right click on that. I am not doing it. So here I will not go there. You go to the procurement and then you go to the purchase orders now. And then I go there. Click on it. I will not go to the process requisitions. It is equivalent to auto credit area we use now. Process requisitions equivalent to auto credit area. Click on the process requisitions and then here go there. And then now here what happens? I will not put the requisition number one zero two five. And then I will not remove the buyer now. And then if you make a search, it will not show you. 
one zero two five will be shown. That was it for two lines. But if this is not on, fine. Uh, if uh, where is the thing? In the one, if it is on, what happens? It will not appear at all. If you click on the help, what happens? It will not show you. Uh, it will not give you a real reason. We have to run a concurrent actually. Consolidate online requisitions in different purchase orders by postponing the order creation until the scheduled job runs. He has not told me what is the scheduled job. When I click on it, also what happens? It is not showing me. And there is a scheduled job. Once when they run the ESS job, then only what happens? You can process. Otherwise, what happens? It is now getting postponed. And don't experiment on the tick mark. If you put a tick mark, it takes almost a day to what happens? Get affected. And similarly, removal also it takes a longer time. So if this is off, please don't touch anything. And then uh, what happens? You take up any of the what's called uh, your uh, this instances and then try you now. Go to the what's called uh, your area of this now. Minimize it. And you can take up. Uh, yeah, once again, you can go there. Here, you take up any of these instances and then make a try. Fine. On the Telegram group, I have posted so many instances now. Fine. Uh, recently, one has got uh, changed. Actually, fine. Is it in VA? Has got changed. So, is it in VA? This is not working on this password. This is not working on this password. So, if you want to experiment on this now, fine. Go there and then experiment. Fine. This point, you experiment it on those instances and not on the ZKVD. Then everything, everybody will be stopped. Actually, fine. don't do it. Yeah, tell me. No, sir, the doubt. Somebody was asking some doubt. If you, if you are doing the check mark, then the process requisition there is no need to. No, uh, it is not so. It will not no. appear over here, and then you cannot convert it into a purchase order at all. There is then no. Automatically, it will be converted as purchase order. No, no, no way. Oh. I have to only convert it. Now. It will not automatically get converted. So once when you run the concurrent, then it will appear or something will happen. That concurrent will not take care of pushing it into the purchasing, maybe. But now auto create area itself will not be visible now. I don't know which is the concurrent now. If anybody knows the concurrent, what is not shown over here now? It is not showing you concurrent now in this place. The concurrent is now. It is saying if you run the concurrent, uh, we can process it further now. And this part is not known to me. It is not saying clearly. It is now postponing this order creation actually. It will not in the area. Maybe on the concurrent, maybe pushing it, maybe. I'm not sure about it. Fine. So if anybody knows much on this, no fine. Uh, and then make an R&D and then tell me about how to consolidate online requisitions the fewer purchase orders can be further progressed if it is on actually. Mm. Nana, there is no scope for PO creation because how would it know the supplier? There's no way it would yes. know the supplier. See, uh, PO can be created without a supplier also. How is it? Yeah, we can very well create it, but we okay. cannot process it now. Okay. We cannot process it. I cannot marry Aishwarya Rai, but I can very well dream with Aishwarya Rai. <laughs> so we can very well create a purchase order, but we cannot process further at all. That is what you are going to do now. So in the process requisition, I will now select both the lines. So with the control, I am selecting both the lines. And then I am going to add to document builder. I can very well process. So from the auto area, I am going to process it. Fine, click on add to document builder. The same future will leave us now. Fine. In this place, I can populate a supplier over here if you want. Or otherwise, I can even postpone it further also. The source document, I will now explain it during purchasing actually. There are so many things on this in the source document. Supplier can be populated while doing that. You are processing it as odd document builder. Or we can even postpone it now. Okay. You can give a supplier over here, otherwise you can postpone it. So it comes on the right hand side, the document builder, everything, all the inputs are coming. So click on create. A purchase order will be created without a supplier actually. So click on create. So the purchase order will be created for both the lines now. Click on create. The purchase order gets created. We can very well create it. It will not allocate a number and then the purchase order is ready, but it cannot be processed because supplier is missing actually. In this place. So the purchase document is created fine. It will not try to go and then validate it. This is an excellent feature available in the purchasing fine. Go to access validate. It will not validate and tell you 3021 is a valid order on the yeah, supplier is not there, this thing not there, that thing not there. You know, that thing not there. It now it cannot even submit it. I will not populate the supplier over here. Fine. Before you submit it, what happens? You have to do it now. Fine. Submission also will fail actually. I will not populate the supplier over here. Supplier inside is populated. Give a save and then again validate it. And go to the action screen here. So you know, saying invalid value for this now. Fine. Maybe uh, some contact is uh, wrongly done now. Fine. Go there. I'll remove it now. I don't know why it's showing this now. Fine. Go there. So you go to the save now. <clears throat> and then click on actions and then go to validate again. Now. So again, it is not showing a lot of things now. Fine. The result routing is not valid now. So I have not set up the result routing at all. So it is not missing. So if I have not set up the result routing on the receiving parameters, it will not, it'll not auto, auto populate over here. The result routing must be available either on the item level or on the receiving parameter level. So let us now go there and then populate the result routing. I will now go to the schedules now. Go to the schedules and then edit the line now. Go to the schedules and then here go to the select button and click on edit the line. You're going to edit it now. 
and I will now populate the receipt protein. So it must be available either on the item or on the receiving parameters. If it's not there, what happens? If it's missing, it will not work at all fine. I will not go into the make it as a standard. Fine. I have no uh, resolving the problems one by one now fine. If I'm okay now. And then I will now give what happens? Give a save and then validate it now. Give a save and then let us now go to actions and then go to validate now. Okay, from validate. Okay, validating it now. So no errors are found now. Everything is now solved. Yeah. Madam, one question uh, in the, the EBS we have uh, in the purchase order, we can do a form, form purchase order. Uh, yeah. Is that form option here in the. No, no forms at all. Here there is no form. Everything is self service one. There is okay. no form option at all. Okay, okay. Now everything is now done. Now, now what happens if you click on the manage approvals, it will now say this is a, the person who is creating it is called application developer. If I click on the manage approvals, it will now say application developer only has to approve. And nobody else is required actually because we have set it as automatic actually. And go there. It will now show you application developer is the only person who has to approve now. If you have set it up as automatic, there is a lot of things on approvals which will be discussing on the purchasing now. Fine, that, right. So let us now submit it now. 3027, it is basically an automatic approval. And click on submit now. So once when you submit it, it will be getting approved. 302 sound will be getting approved. So it's not done. Now we are going to receive it now. In this case, what happens? You go there, go on and have a look at this one. Uh, it may show you on this now. I'm not sure about it. So on the supply chain area, if you refresh it now, and I'm refreshing it now on the supply chain area, SCO area, go there. And then you go to the orchestration plan. Now purchase order is also approved. Fine. It is not showing me the purchase order. No, see the purchase order is there. But whether it will not show anything or not, the document by is there. And then click on the documents, execution documents. We go there. 3027 has to come over here. It's not coming here. I don't know. It's, so it is not meant for this. Not to be. The buy, if you go to the buy area, 1025 is coming. If you expand it also, what happens? You will not see whether anything is not showing or not. And expand it. It shows you this now 1025. Again, 3027 has to show now as a purchase order now. Purchase order number is not coming here now. Maybe it may even take some time now. In the previous sign, what happens? Once when you will now show everything that all the numbers are all shown here, it is not showing you. Maybe I may need another additional role. I think I'm not sure about it. If an additional role is there, then what happens? It will be showing you or not. I'm not sure about it. So somebody make a check. The purchase order is not coming. In the execution documents also 3027 is not coming. Maybe they might have added some additional roles because of which it is not coming. Mm -hmm. Now 3027, I'm going to make a receipt now. Let us now make a receipt now. We'll now go to the supply chain execution and receive it now. Will not go to the what's called supply chain execution and then I go to the inventory management. I'm going to perform a receipt of this now 3027 purchase order. Now. Go there. So I will now go to the receipts area now. I will now go to the receipts area and then go to the receive expected shipments and then query for the 3027 now. 3027 and now I'm going to make a query now. So click on search now. So select it and then click on receive. Now. I want to receive it now. <coughs> so we are going to make a receipt. It is a standard receipt, and so what happens? We cannot populate any supplementary at all here now. Supplementary cannot be populated. It is called a gate receipt. The man who is sitting in the gate is now going to have a look at the document number of the supplier. The supplier has now given a delivery challenge, and then he is going to make an entry. He will not open the consignment at all in the gate. And so what happens? We cannot give anything at all. Fine. Even if the item is the serial control, lot control, nothing can be entered in the gate actually. But Nana sir, in our tool we have a profile option to override the destination. Yeah, here also, right. here also we have it. Here also we have the override option. We'll be seeing it during purchasing it. Here, uh, okay. here now itself, you'll now see it now. The fact and I'm going to show you the overriding option. Yeah. Because I'm now covering the receipts of purchase orders also this training. So we are going to see the overriding option of this in the, uh, in the while you are receiving, making it from pure receipts. So I click on receipt now. You're going to see this now. So you must uh, you set up the receiving options. If receiving option is not set, we cannot make any gate receipts. As well as interop parameters also. Interop parameters also cannot be done. I'm going to click on it. And then I'm not right click. I'm not using 201 now. Fine. I'm not using what? Organization as what? Um, 201. And then uh, what is the organization number now? Once again, the manager orders. Go to 201. 201. 201 only, na? Yes. No, you didn't populate the quantity, that's the reason, I think. No, no, no. It's not a quantity. It was not showing you clearly. If you click on the gate, the receiving option is not set for the organization so on so on. Is not showing you the organization number, but what about the, uh, the receiving options is not set now. Fine, tell what is now there now. So let us go there and then set up the receiving options. Right click and then duplicate now. It may be 201. I'm not sure about the organization number now. Go there. So I will now go to the what uh, manage receiving parameters. Fine, but I click on set up and maintenance now. <clears throat> Our number was there on the left hand uh, the receiving part in this part. Where is now? Uh, where is the org number? Uh, about organization M201. 
Oh, not oh, just about here. Yeah, I am to not on this one. Showing your friend with a different account. Go there. So now I will now go on that. Do the receiving parameter. Fine. Go to the search now. <clears throat> Manage receiving parameters. I am not going to set up the manage receiving parameters for two not one now. Thank you. So M two zero one is there. Fine. Here, what happens? I will now put only the mandatory fields. Oh, you know, fine. Go there. Click on it. I will now make it as none. So this is the one. This will be explained to the fag end of the training now. This is floating. I will now make it as one. Standard. If you do it, it will now default onto the newly created purchase orders also. Generation method is automatic, and then here type is numeric, and then I will now give a next number as let's say two thousand, and then for the RME for the customers, I will now make it as what standard, and then that's okay, fine. This much is only mandatory. We'll be having a discussion on this later on. Click on several posts. Now the receiving organizations of M two zero one is now set now. Click on it. Now I will now go back to this place, and then I will now try to perform the receipt. Okay. So I will now show receipt quantity. I am going to give it now, fine. It will now show you how much is quantity is going to be received now. So 50 is expected one, and two uh, carriers actually. And then click on create receipt. It will now be creating a receipt. It goes to the next level. I will now put the shipment number as what one two three, the packing slip number as four five six, and then the shipping method M20. I will now put it now, fine. How it has come? I go there. Number of uh, packing slip, packing units. Now I will now say there are two units are there in this one. The label number. I take a chart. Jingle check on. I go there. Populate everything, whatever is there. Fine. So when you take a report, this will be giving you a lot of value addition for the team actually, fine. for the uh, ma management and others who are analyzing all the receipts. Fine. If you have populated all these things, but none of them is mandatory actually. Fine. Go there. So you can even populate all these things depending upon the company's policy. You can populate all these things and click on number. So once when you submit it, what happens? The GRN number will be getting created. Fine. Click on submit. The GRN number gets created. <clears throat> Some of them might have been set by you, and so it may not be required. Actually, fine. Whatever is not set, based upon the on-screen instructions, go on that setup. So, two thousand one is the result number. Fine, go there. Click on it. Come on, get now. And then here we'll now put away this. Now. Click on that now. And I'm going to make a put away. This. Go there. Click on it. Now click on it. We'll now perform a put away. So we're going to perform put away of the GR number two thousand one now. GR number is the result number. Two thousand one is the one. Fine. Go and then make a search now. Click on search. Now coming over there. Fine. Click on put away. <coughs> you know, make a put away. So here the one quantity, and then click on submit now. Fine. Now by which what happens? It will be going and then reaching the destination now. So click on submit now. So it go the destination type is what submitted. So here you cannot do it. I think you have to perform this. But you have to what happens? You go there. If you try to submit it, it will not work. I am not sure about it. Otherwise, what happens? You have to split the line actions and then split the line and then put the submitters over here now. Fine. Click on submit. I will not see whether it is working or not. See, so it is not working. You cannot submit a transaction. The destination type is multiple. Actually. Not possible. So you cannot do it. I go to click on split line. I go, go to actions and then go to split line. No. Split line. And then I will know. You cannot split the line because the select quantity is the destination type of multiple. No. Go, click on it. I will not have the. Uh, have you, okay, fine. Uh, it is not allowing me to do it in this place at all. Fine. Uh, because I will not make it as a receiving now. I go to the receiving area and then split it. No. I go to actions and then go to split line now. I go there. So first quantity line is let's say ten <clears throat> or fifteen. I am going to put it on one sub unit, and then the remaining thirty five I am going to put it now. It has come in two areas of oh, forty and ten now. Fine, I am splitting it like this. So I go there. So fifteen is there now. What happens? I will now change it to what happens? Receiving is now fine. Go there. So give us save now. Fine. So, uh, I am now splitting it, and the put away cannot be done like this now. Go there. Go so the sub inventory is not coming because it has to come as inventory actually. It has to come as inventory. And give us submit and then see now. Fine, it has to come. You must enter the receiving location actually. Fine, that. So location is required. Delivery location is required now. So here, you know, we give a cancel now. <clears throat> so we are unable to put it away. I'm going to click on done now. We'll again go and then query it now. Click on it. We'll now go to the what's called put away receipts now. I will now. Two thousand one is the one. So click on search now. So here we go there and then I click on put away. It is not showing me multiples at all. It is not allowing me to even split now. You click can you edit? Click. Can you click the edit one? No, no, sir. One second. I will not edit. I will not see the edit whether it is working or not. Maybe edit will be working. Okay. Click on edit and then try to do it now. You cannot edit. Nice. Is there uh, any inspection kind of a thing? No, no. No, it is not an inspection. It is only standard receipt. Now, while receiving it, what happens? I should have received it in two parts now, basically. I don't know why it's not coming. It's not fine. Click on it. I will not click on the actions and uh, show all distributions, man. One second. Already now I'm not going to the details. Not fine. Click on it. I want to have it as what uh, as a receiving. I will now give a save. Not fine. Click on receiving location. I'm going to put it. Not fine. So M20. 
and then I will now give a tab. Improve the location is not coming, and sub inventory also I'm going to put it now. Now I think it will work. So click on search now. I will now put the sub inventory over here now. So location sub inventory is not coming together now. Uh, leave it as such now. I know that you want it. So it is what as so uh, it is not de destined to receiving now. I am click on OK now. Click on OK. The location is also provided. If I click on submit now, and the sub inventory is now coming. I will not see whether it is coming or not. It will not come. So click on submit now. Now 50 is now destined to receiving. And the put away transaction was created actually. I am going to click on OK now. <coughs> not done. Go there. So click on done and then come out of it now. And then again perform what happens, go there and then perform it. I'm going to go to the put away results now. I'm 2001. Because we are not specific the sub inventory at all. I'm going to click on search now. You see, it's now coming. I'm going to click on it now. And then I click on put away. You must select one or multiple rows to use this one. Select it. And then click on put away. And go there. Now again, destination is not coming as receiving at all. The inventory at all. So it has to come as inventory. I don't know where I'm missing. I forgot about that actually. So if you have two lines being received now, somewhere I'm missing it actually. Maybe cancel now. And another click on actions and show all distributions. I know I saw one message. Ah, 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 ah. So put away results is there. I will now say put away. <clears throat> and then I go to the actions now. Show all distributions. Show all distributions. Show all distributions will not see. You cannot do. Ones with the thing for distributions for document type. The page displays the di distributions of document type. You cannot undo the change. Okay, fine. Doesn't matter. Fine. Click on it. Now, now give me a warning. Can go that. Click on it. Now, okay, it is now coming. So all distributions. What happens? I am now populating the sub inventories over here now. I go that. Click on it. Sub inventories now. So destination sub inventory is coming. So show all distributions. When you go that. Click on it and then click on submit. Now, fine. I think it will accept it. Who is this? Who has answered this now? Raga, na? Yeah, this is Sharad. Sharat, okay, fine. Sharat, by via actions, distributions, it is now allowing you to put away this one. The put away transaction was created. Thank God, click on it. We will now go on and have a look at the stock. Duplicate and have a look at the stock. You are not going to have a look at the stock. So you go to the supply chain execution and then I go to the inventory management and then we will now have a look at the stock whether the stock has arrived yet or not. I will now go to what inventory and then I will now go to the item quantities now and manage item quantities. So when you have multiple distributions, you have to go to actions and then show all distributions and then do it now. Good. So is M20 underscore SU and then give a tab now. We will now see whether we have got items of 50 in the inventory or not. We have got it. So now the replenishment cycle is now fulfilled with the supplier's supply. Now let us see on the orchestration area whether it is now getting updated or not. Go there. Where the orchestration area? Supply chain orchestration area is the one. I will not give it done and then again requery it now. So this is the one. So let me requery the batch number actually. And click on done now. Click on done and then come out of it and then I'll now requery it now. I will now go to this area and go to that. So I will now go to the supply chain and then go to the supply orchestration area and then query the number now and see the and click on it now. And then go to the manage supply lines. So click on the manage supply lines and then query this number. Click on query the number. Give it now. So click on search now. Now see. You know that and click on it. It has to show us fulfilled actually. It is not only completed, it has got fulfilled actually. But it is not showing anything at all. Maybe you may need some additional roles or some other setups. But previously, it goes to fulfilled now. I have seen it in release 9. It is all going to fulfilled actually. Now it is not only showing complete, and then it is also not showing me the other execution documents. It shows you the complete path for me previously. So they might have made some additional requirement for somebody who please explore them to me on the supply orchestration area. What else setups are required? So orchestration plan is also showing me what only the purchase order number, but even the execution documents doesn't show me the purchase order number. The buy is coming, but it is not showing for me. So now the replenishment is now complete via a supplier rule. Now what I'm going to do is I will now create an item. I will now go on and create an item now. I will now create an item and then which is not having any what's called the, this thing. So the prerequisite for pushing it to the supplier is what? The list price actually. I will now go there. So I will now go to the product management and then I will now go to the product information management and then let me create an item which is not having a list price actually. Create item. <coughs> so I will go there. It's the M20. The root item class. <coughs> go there. Click on OK now. Item is M20 <coughs> underscore what happens? Min max 
and then let me add it now i want more item adding it now so it's m to the underscore two now the second item i'm enabling it from in max i'll give the parameters fine the different parameters you make an experiment now 5 and then 5 and then 40 maximum order one is 41 remember min max must be enabled now i'm going to click on it it's all done now fine but i can't do it along go to the what supplier level now supplier was choosing so the item is not having a list price remember because even close it is not done so let us now run the uh, what's called the min max now find check on some error one was this the no run it oh, this screen itself is not working fine close it now fine if something is not working don't do too much of an r and d on this go the check on it and then i now go to the tools and then i go to the what's called the scheduled process now i will now click on some new process the min max and run it Min. So is the print min max? Print min and then what happens? Click on OK now. Running it. Organization is what M two zero one zero one. Sorry, by inventory item. <coughs> Planning sub inventory. Then here again the sub one. I am going to choose it now. Sub one. And then I will now make the restocking is very yes now. It will now successfully push into the interface tables of uh, orchestration. Okay, supply orchestration. I click on something now. It is now having a supply sourcing. It will now successfully push. Do not have any issue at all. I go there. So refresh it. So this will be successfully pushing it, and then we will now run the process supply chain orchestration also. It will now pick up this number five three seven three eight eight. So go to the shell still process. I will now what I will run this one process supply chain orchestration. Right. So click on OK, and then submit it now. This is basically from inventory system. I have now put the organization M two zero one. This may not be required actually. Submit whatever is now available on the interface areas of supply chain orchestration will be pulled into the appropriate. Will be pulled and then pushed into the appropriate what uh, I say sourcing area of buy maker transfer actually. Supply chain orchestration will not take care of everything now. For instance, the demand is now having a supplier uh, and then what about the pushing into the purchasing area? Go there. Click on it. No, no, no. This will equally create a TO and whip job wherever it is required. Is it? Exactly. We can also create a TO or a whip job wherever it is required. We'll be seeing uh, the whip job. We'll be seeing it in order management actually. Fine. The TO will be seeing it uh, in the ensuing days actually. Transfer orders we're going to see now. Yes. And then go there. And then now click on the underline of the output now. And click on save now. So click on store. And then go there. And now take a copy of it. Okay, and then I'll not close it. I'll not open the word document. File new, <coughs> blank, and then I'll not paste it over. So the supply chain orchestration interface, process supply chain orchestration, has picked up this number now. And go there. So we'll not go and query on this area. It'll have an error actually because the list price is missing. So because of which it cannot process it into the purchasing area at all. Okay, click on it. I'll not go there. I will not give a cancel. <coughs> I will now go to the area and then I will now how and then see the supply orchestration area now. 
So click on it. Ah, it's not coming. Throw it out. Fine, if it doesn't come out, you can know, simply throw it out. Fine, click on the home icon and then see the song. If it doesn't come, oh God, everywhere it is not coming. Come on, yeah. Yeah, it's coming. Click on it. As long as you are done and then come out of it and then do it now. Or you can even click on the icon now. Fine, and the company icon also will open. It will not take you to the uh, springboard now. Go click on it. So the company icon also you can take and then go there. Click on the supply chain orchestration area and then go there. I will not go to the supply orchestration. You put the frequently used screen. We can even save it into the favorites now. Fine, go there. Click on it. I will not go to this place. Go to the favorite icon and then here I will not. What happened? The recent items is not showing you. You go to the favorites and then I will not add it. Fine, add to favorites. Now. This screen will be added. So I will not manage supply orders now. Fine, click on seven rows. Now it's not done. So to commit quickly, what happens if you go to the home area? What you can do is you can click on the favorite icon and then you know see you now what's called uh, there is a manage supply orders directly there. So you can even frequently used screens can be added to the favorites now. The recent items also will show you what are the recent ones you have chosen now. You go to the favorites and then if you click on the manage supply orders, it will not take you directly to that. And click on that is the way you can use the favorites also. So click on it and then here I will not go to the manage supply lines now. You go to the manage supply lines and then paste this number over here now and then your tab and then click on search now. It will not show you the error. Now. It is not showing you error. You must enter the price attribute. You must enter the charge account. But this is a fake one now. Fine. Actually, technical team is now picking up some errors from here and there now. But this is a real one. Fine. This is not done. Fine. This is, charge account is already set actually, because we already created everything now. And charge account is there. We are currently the position purchase orders and we received it also. So this is a fake information. Uh, the charge account which has been picked by the technical team actually. But this is the real information. Now. The price never. That's why what happens, even writing all these things also need what happens, a lot of extensive discussions actually. Now, let us now correct the list price also. Click on it. So let us go there, done, and then let us now correct the list price. Click on it. Let's go there. Go to the product. I will now go to the product management, product information management, and then go to this item now. So click on it. Now browse on the items now. Browse on these items now. <clears throat> go there. Now query this item. So it's a M20 underscore 2 now. Find your tab and then click on search now. You're going to search for the item. We are going to populate the list price now. Uh, this is normally master controlled, but uh, these guys are now doing a lot of R&D on this now. And now go to the org level and then see whether it is now org controlled or not. And it is normally this list price is master controlled actually. And go there. I will now check on the org now. M201, not M200. So in the top, whatever they now go and make a check. These guys are making a lot of R&D on this now. And then go there. And then I will now go to specifications and then have a look at the purchase price now. And keep on purchasing. The list price will now see it. List price is it is editable. Somebody has made it as R control. It should not be. In reality, what happens? They are all master control now. Fine, I will now make it as three dollars. So I am now correcting it now. Fine, I click on it. I will now give a save and close now. It should be master control actually. That is why in the training systems, what happens? That many people will now make uh, so many R and Ds and then do it now. Fine, click on it. We will now go to the uh, what's called the supply chain orchestration area now. Now go to space. That's the area. <clears throat> this is the one. So now let me resubmit it now. Fine. Select both the lines and then resubmit it. Fine. Correct it. And then the, the problem causing area is now corrected now. Fine. I will now resubmit it on the supply orchestration area. SCO area, I'm resubmitting it now. Fine. Click on that. So it is now resubmitted now. Fine. I don't know very concurrent is running or not. Fine. Now it's now saying it will not start actually. Fine. I will now give a refresh and then see whether anything is happening or not. So it is now resubmitted. See the error has vanished. When I refresh it, what happened? The error has vanished actually. So click on refresh now. The error has vanished. So it will now soon become now fine whether click on it. The, it will now start actually. It will now start and then go to the completion. Fine, click on refresh now. So the error has vanished actually. So it is not line splitters is still not started. Fine. Click on the orchestration area and then have a look at it now. Fine. Not started. So it takes some time now. Fine. At least the error is not there actually. So we expand it. Not started. So here it has now gone into the purchasing now. Fine, click on it. So the purchasing is not done. Fine, click on refresh now. So we'll now go to the purchasing area and then have a look at it. Now I click on done now. We'll now see whether any requisition has come or not. And click on it. We'll now go to the what's called. Click on home icon. It is not coming. I will now give it done and then try now. So click on done. Click on done. Done done and then try the home icon. If it is still not coming, you can use the icon also here. And it's coming actually. Go there. So go to the procurement and then go to the purchase requisition. 1027 was the last one. Now it must be created 1028 now. So go there. That is the previous one now. <clears throat> it has still not got no. so the processing is not happening or I don't know what exactly and the error is gone now so click on refresh now see it is now complete 
is now closed and complete. And then you go to the buy area and then see the requisition number. Now, 1028 must be there. Now, find what that is. It's 102 zone only. It's 102 zone only. So, so, if you go there and see, it's not going to work. So, 102 zone only. Click on it. You'll see the item 2 is there or not. With the price of 3, actually. So, the price of 3 is coming. Got it now, fine. So, this completes an elementary discussion on supplier sourcing for the min-max, actually. It is not all. So, like Subhu was making a lot of R&D. If you find anything new on the thing, what happens there, please educate all of us now and you'll all learn it. We all learned one more thing, that if the distribution is going to be multiple, actions and then show distribution all will now allow you to populate the supplementary action. And that is the one thing which you learned now. If it is going to be multiple action. So, that way you can do it. Sharath has pointed out. Fine, but anybody who want to speak, you can open up your video and then speak so that others can also see you. Any doubts on this supplier sourcing? Tomorrow we are going to see ox sourcing. Good then. <clears throat> Everybody is now understood everything, I think, probably. There are so many things which you have to do in R&D now. Right? Make small, small R&D. You go and then explore the application to a greater extent and then dig deep. You'll now find so many things. Now, the path is now set for you to do an R&D. So, we learned a new thing called supply orchestration now today. Okay, if there are no other doubts, I will now stop the recording now. <clears throat>